Giant monsters attack! Again. Oh boy, but as it seems we're all out of luck when it comes to terrifying giant monster movies being hell-bent on devouring us all in a single munch. The thing is, in part one of this series, you guys are a little bit conflicted on what actually constitutes a giant monster movie. In several ways, we contributed the art of monstrous ambiguity toward these great hulking cinematic beasts in playing the most integral part to the genre. But hey, that's not enough for some of us. I get it. We want giant monsters of a different veracity. And for that, we may have to break the rules a little bit. Well, let's do it. Hello horror fans, what's going on? And once again, welcome back to the Scary Channel on YouTube, Top 5 Scary Videos. As per usual, I'll be your horror host Jack Finch, as today, we're curious to take a look at the Top 5 Scariest Giant Monster Movies, Part 2. Roll the clip. For the curious amongst you, that clip was from 2017's Colossal, starring Anne Hathaway and Jason Sudeikis in a weird horror hybrid of a rom-com and monster movie mashup. And you know what? I ummed and ahed about putting that movie on part one of that list, but for the sake of staying true to the form of horror, I chose not to. Now, Colossal is probably genreless in its approach. It's a weird hybrid of a lot of things, giant monsters included, but I wouldn't say it has the same essence of what we know and love about horror, but still, it's a pretty great movie. So consider it today's honorable mention. Also, as we said previously, no kaiju. Kicking off at number five, them, 1954. Mountain lions never come down into the desert. No, no cat ever lived, leave a print like that. Maybe something was set down there. Alright guys, a lot of you folks called for some classic black and white style monster movies, and yet I held off including the more iconic of them, given the fact that, yeah, no matter how much you'd like to argue against it, they're still pretty damn dated. However, one of those movies may well be impervious to the sands of time, and of course it would feature an equally impervious creature as its titular monstrosity. Them, a movie about giant radioactive ants released way back when in 1954. And yet, despite its initial premise promising some unabashed cheese of the 50s variety, surprisingly, this movie holds up phenomenally well. Particularly in its opening scene, which from a horror perspective was actually way ahead of its time. The sad truth is though, from our high and mighty tower of 2019, when we look back at black and white cinema, they have to work extra hard for them to stand the test of time. Granted, movies like Psycho, 1933's King Kong and the original Godzilla are iconic in their own right, but still, the truth remains the same. To be good, you gotta be the best. Directed by Gordon Douglas with a story from George Worthing Yates, them tells a tale of two New Mexico police officers, Sergeant Ben Peterson, played by James Whitmore, who in his later life would go on to play Brooks from the Shawshank Redemption, alongside trooper Ed Blackburn, as they discover a young girl distraught, wandering the desert in a strange, almost catatonic state. They take her to a nearby trailer, set up by her family who were vacationing there, only to find that he's been mysteriously and savagely attacked by a strange, almost impossibly large creature. While what ensues is a classic cat and mouse pursuit of two intrigued police officers following in the wake of this destruction and whilst anything else would be spoilers, when this movie gets going it actually really, really gets going because well, giant radioactive ants, that's why, that's all I'm saying. Despite that though, for a movie that during its time would have relied on being a quick cash grab, instead them actually takes its time in portraying an incredibly compelling narrative. For storyline and performance alone, this movie is worth a watch and yes, whilst the effects may be dated, the bones of this movie are giant monster cinema 101. Swinging in at number 4. Prophecy, 1979. And if you thought Annihilation was cool for featuring some mutated ursine, Think again, because 1979's Prophecy was doing it before it was even cool. And that's the point of this movie actually, because still, 1979's Prophecy gets so trashed by critics that it's hard to see the mutated leaves for the trees. You see, as a creature feature, Prophecy is like playing a feral druid in an RPG. There's more metamorphoses than you can shake a branch at, but as a giant monster movie, this movie relies on a hodgepodge of all of those creatures into one giant pile of vile, mutagenic flesh. Sounds gross? Well yeah, that's because it is, and Prophecy loses quite a bit of its sheen, down to the fact that the practical effects aren't exactly the greatest in this movie, especially when you understand the choices that this movie made in watering them down, but still, there's something quite charming about Prophecy that makes it worth its salt, and most importantly, like all worthy monster movies, this one has a message. Written by David Seltzer and directed by John Frankenheimer, the brilliant yet troubled director responsible for 1962's Birdman of Alcatraz, amongst many others, Prophecy was the first flagship title of the so-called Hollywood North, a business move in the late 70s intended to give a facelift for cinema in Canada. And what better way to do that than to create a story about a giant, vengeful forest spirit hell-bent on destroying a paper mill in the woodland of North America. I mean, yeah, it is set in Maine, but still, you get the picture. It tells the tale of Dr. Robert Verne, an environmental scientist who was commissioned to undertake 
caretaker report about three lumberjacks that had mysteriously disappeared. Obviously, his pregnant wife accompanies him because, of course, that's a sensible thing to do. And suddenly, Dr. Vern witnesses something incredibly wrong with this forest. Giant salmon, vicious raccoons, tadpoles the size of bullfrogs, because why not? This movie essentially takes the ending scene of Jumanji and injects it with some highly mutagenic substances and then just lets everything go to hell. Don't piss off Mother Nature, guys. That's all I'm saying. No, but seriously, save the planet. Next up at number three, Monsters 2010. Okay, here we have a pretty difficult one. On the one tentacle, monsters feature some of the most remarkable special effects that I've ever seen from a debut feature filmmaker. On the other tentacle, 2010's Monsters is difficult to access. This movie has a very peculiar pacing that makes it difficult to truly get behind, and on first viewing of this movie, I was left a little underwhelmed. However, when you watch this movie back, the craftsmanship behind it is astonishing. And for a film that promises on delivering a certain set of expectations, it certainly does that and then completely subverts them. Hey, maybe you'll be blown away by this movie like quite a number of people are and were, but all I'm saying is, if it doesn't stick, give it another chance. Also, the guy who made this movie, Gareth Edwards, well, I went to the same college as he did, and I grew up in the same town, so yeah, please don't think I'm being biased. And also, just saying, but Gareth Edwards is awesome, and both 2014's Godzilla and Star Wars Rogue One were remarkable efforts. Monsters tells a tale of a NASA deep space probe that after crash landing in the wilderness of Mexico, sprouts extraterrestrial life forms that rapidly spread throughout the Mexico-US border region, subsequently leading to the quarantine of the northern half of Mexico. Quickly, both the US and Mexican troops frantically battle to contain these creatures, and so a huge wall stretches the entirety of the border and is quickly assembled. Sound familiar? Yeah, this movie is geopolitical and it pulls no punches in that regard. It's also prophetic, maybe, which is pretty weird to say, but whatever. It stars Scoot McNary, who is awesome, by the way, as an American photojournalist, tasked with finding his boss's daughter, played by Whitney Abel, who is stranded in a Mexican hospital in the heartlands of the Ravage Zone. And that's all I'll say, really, because this movie is a road movie without any roads, just giant tentacular creatures roaming the wasteland. Also, it's important to note that this movie isn't exactly scary, but instead it offers a far more refreshing angle to the giant monster genre, and that alone is worth taking a look at. Coming in at number two, The Relic, 1997. Pretty unfortunate timing that, isn't it? This movie, like many others, makes SWAT teams look incredibly inefficient. Sorry SWAT, but it's a pretty glaring trope that I just had to point out. If you see a SWAT team, you know things are gonna get, well, pretty, pretty bad. Now, if you guys didn't know, I absolutely love this weird little 90s oddball of a movie, and so it only feels appropriate that somewhere down the line, we just have to give it a place on our giant monster movies list. Cathoga certainly stands the test of time in that regard, and although flawed in many ways, the amount of unabashed 90s brilliance that is poured into this movie is truly a feat to be witnessed. This movie is just fun, and if we're in the mood for being comparative, 1997's The Relic is the deep impact of the movie Monster World, and whilst we all know that deep impact is far superior to Armageddon, in that regard, The Relic is kind of unrivaled too. And not only is it unrivaled, it's just fun. This movie is so damn entertaining that you should give it a watch just for that sake. Directed by Peter Hymans and based upon the 1995 novel of the same name by Douglas Preston and Lincoln Child, The Relic tells a tale of Dr. Margot Green, played by the awesome Penelope Ann Miller, an evolutionary biologist who is stationed at the Field Museum of Natural History in downtown Chicago. Here, during her application for a brand new research grant, she stumbles upon the unearthed research of a missing anthropologist, Dr. John Whitney, who has seemingly disappeared after studying the cultural practices of a tribe in the jungles of South America. America. Now, part of this research is a strange stone statue that depicts a creature known only as the Cathoga, a mythical monster that rules the forgotten jungles of South America. And then, of course, suddenly and out of nowhere, people just start losing their heads and their brains willy-nilly in all manners of crazy, mysterious, museum-based monstrosities. If you enjoy ominous camera work around dark corridors, and if you enjoy the premise of loosely based anthropology in one of the most underrated and entertaining movies of the 90s with some remarkable performances to boot, giant monster included, then this movie is certainly for you. And finally, coming in at the morning spot, The Ritual, 2017. Ah! Ah! All right, 
saying, guys, let's pull no punches. If it's scary that you came for, then scary is what you're going to get. Truth be told, as has been highlighted in both parts of this series, when it comes to actual giant monsters in horror cinema, it's relatively difficult to efficiently deliver the spooks. It's like a sliding scale, really, and the larger these creatures become, then the more that the technicalities of horror cinema become diminished. It's difficult to balance, and perhaps the reason that many of these monster movies have instead relied on the tried and tested trope of creating the most convincingly large creature imaginable, 2017's The Ritual, however, is perhaps the finest balance of the two. And although we have already covered it in a creature feature regard, it is only proper that we give it its place here too. Mainly for the fact that, well, the Jotun is pretty damn large, and terrifying, and weird. But yeah, that's just what we've come to expect when it comes to the mythological monstrosities of the ancient Norse. That goes without saying. Directed by David Bruckner with a screenplay by Joe Barton, 2017's The Ritual is based upon the 2011 novel of the same name by Adam Neville, which is surprisingly brilliant. The film itself stars Rafe Spall, Asha Ali, Robert James Collier, and Sam Troughton, who all offer some freaking fantastic performances in this movie, and play Luke, Phil, Hutch, and Dom, respectively. Four best friends who agree to hike the Kungsleden Forest in Sarek National Park, northern Sweden, following the tragic death of their longtime friend, Rob, who wished to hike the trail before he was murdered in an effort to bring their struggling friendship back together. Spoilers, kind of. And really, that's kind of all there is to the ritual without giving any other spoilers away because it's four best friends trapped in a terrifying forest as a giant monster and its fanatical death cult roam the woodland ready to ruin everyone's day. And yet, although the brilliance of this movie relies on some well-constructed interlocking narratives, ultimately resulting in a more than cathartic ending, the best part of 2017's The Ritual is the creature design alone. Seriously, the less we say about the Jotun, the better. But this film features one of the most unique monster designs of recent times. And whilst not as big as Godzilla or King Kong, as so far as originality in horror cinema goes, this giant, terrifying demigod is certainly worth the zealotry. Give it a watch. Well, there we have it, guys. Our list for the top five scariest giant monster movies, part two. Some new faces, some old faces, and some reminders to check out some of the greats. What do you guys think? Do you agree, disagree? Have any more to add to this list? Then let us know your thoughts down in the comment section below. But before we depart from today's video, let's first take a quick look at some of your more creative comments from over the past few days. First up, Teresa O'Brien says, Jack, could you possibly talk faster? Really? Are you, are you sure, Teresa? I feel like I may cause a rift in the space-time continuum if I speak any faster. Maybe you should reconsider. Yeah, maybe you should reconsider that, yeah. And finally, Toots Magoot says, Adam's Family Values, one of the best movies ever made. Dude, Jack, no. <sighs> Toots Magoots? Gonna level with you. 1993's Adam Family Values, starring Raul Julia and Angelica Houston, is one of the best movies ever made. I did not stutter. And believe me, I will die on this hill. It's one of the best movies ever made. And on that note, unfortunately, that's all we've got time for in today's video. Just sticking around all the way until the end. If you were a fan of this video, or just top five scary videos in general, then please be a dear and hit that thumbs up button, as well as that subscribe bell, and I'll be seeing you in the next one. As per usual, I've been your horror shack, Finch. You've been watching top five scary videos. And until next time, you take it easy.